Nigel Farage, he was very instrumental, of course, uh, in Britain's independence party in basically the Brexit that took place there. And he's saying that there's this political revolution taking place around the world. And, you know, by gosh, he's right. We saw it, of course, in Britain with Brexit, the citizens voting to leave the European Union and take back their country. And then we saw it here with Donald Trump winning the election because Americans were tired of losing their jobs, tired of our war of victory like Trump's. So what role should America be playing in this revolution? Joining me right now, retired four-star general. Good to see you, Trish. I, what say you? I mean, this, do you agree that this is a kind of revolution that we're seeing right now in the Western world? Yeah, I mean, I, I, frustrated not just for a few years, but for a long time. In Europe, it's petited to get that kind of support. And some of my friends are saying, Jack, you don't understand. In some of these towns that we live in, be put in a jailhouse, mm -hmm. then we just got to get tough about some of this. And, and intelligence, mm -hmm. I'm absolutely convinced they know how to protect the American people. Our viewers should not be intimidated. And I'll be right back. See her here on Good set. Welcome from California. Um, why are you voting for Donald Trump? I voted. You did. And okay. you, him is a candidate that uh, caused you, because I know you, you, there were things oh, about him you didn't anybody like. Anybody who follows me at Reagan World on my mm -hmm. Twitter account knows how I feel about Donald Trump. Right. And I said, that's just not happening, that we need to, in fact, pay more. Well, I think that that eight years of Obama. Why aren't things better for the black community? Why aren't things better for the Hispanic community? Why he, Donald Trump took that on. A lot of people were very nervous when Donald Trump first came out and said, look, you know, basically to the black community, it, it, things haven't been going well. Why don't you give me a shot? And, and addressing this in a way that I think the Republican Party has been afraid to. In other words, things are lousy in inner cities, but it's almost as though the, a lot of Republicans uh, have chosen to kind of sweep that under the rug, ignore it. They figure they're never going to get that vote anyway. Doesn't that need to change? It absolutely needs to change. I have spoken at an event. Where's the, where's the right. governor of New Mexico? I haven't seen her. She's like hiding. To see you, we'll do it again. Indeed. All right, Donald Trump and his family casting their votes just a short time. So you're down to the final hours. Um, looking forward to a victory party tonight. Uh, what's the plan? Well, I any idea, Laura, he was going to do this. Um, you know, it's a financial sacrifice. You, your husband, uh, the whole family is making a sacrifice. And a lot of people look at politics and think, well, why would I do that today? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, he, he was willing to put himself out there. If if he's not successful, what does he do? Well, I, first of all, I think he will be successful. Demanding change. Yeah. And so I would think regardless he, he will remain a, a very powerful and important voice in the party. Yeah, well, I think you're right. And, and look, you, the people that, you know, I was... that Talking to people, too. Yeah. Um, th th there's so much at stake for them right now in this election. You were just in North Carolina, your home state. How do you think that was? Yeah. All righty. Um, after checking in with Team Trump, we are going to turn our focus to Team Clinton. We continue to watch uh, people going to the polls right now on this very, very important day you got to wonder what the role of the media has been in all of this and the bias that the media has had. Join me right now as the host of Media Buzz. I mean, I think the media has been extremely biased, not afraid to show its bias. I mean, in previous election cycles, they, they made all There was all a fig liberals. leaf there, yeah. Right. Uh. <laughs> but now the gloves are off. And how do you think that's actually going to affect the outcome? Well, it, it, Much of the press is completely out of touch with what mainstream America is actually thinking. I mean, I, I've made the point that, you know, and to you I've made this yeah. point, you know, too many people are living these rather affluent lifestyles in big cities, and they don't know what it is. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank Trish. you so much. Make sure, everyone, you tune in to Watch Howie on Media Buzz. Happens every weekend, 11 a.m. Eastern on Sunday. We're going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Oh, we got some fresh evidence of media bias. Imagine that. And our competitor, CNBC. So here we go. Your contributors, all right? In fact, I don't know if the camera can catch this, but uh, you have a, a button right here, I right guess, that there. says lock her up. Lock so I know up. where you're coming from. Yes, I, know I have a where point of view stand. that I present here as um, clear. Have you seen the other said, emails, though? I mean, the other emails, for example, you know, where he's talking to John Podesta and is like basically trying to get a high rah, rah. five from Podesta uh, because of his ridiculous questions at the debate where he basically said, Donald Trump, aren't you just sort of running a Superman a comic book version of a campaign? Um, so there was a coziness there that, I, you know, I, yeah. I don't think is, is normal uh, amongst someone who is trying to be down the middle. Yeah, not, not very normal. And not they, they try in the media, especially the left, tries to, because we do actually present both sides and we try to make sure they covered and somehow just the fact that you're presenting the conservative angle right. on a story How dare you. makes you 
uh, you know, a right-wing conservative. That's right, yes. Yeah, uh, I, think I, we need more a I think we need more information to, to, to make the final judgment. See, in general, I mean, I think about the Clinton campaign, the fact that she had Jay-Z on stage with her. Jay-Z, I mean, don't get me started. I've been on this thing all week because <laughs> I'm just so horrified and disgusted by his language and the way he demeans women um, in, in, in a... a a horrible, tragic way, considering how many young kids are listening to this music, and, and it's, it's not setting any kind of standard for any kind of normal, civilized person. But anyway, she gets up on stage with Jay-Z, and nobody bats an eye. Like, he's got, he's got, he, and his language was terrible, by the way, when he was up on that stage. Dropping F-bombs, N-bombs. Yeah, I keep saying, I cannot tell you what his lyrics are, because they are that bad. They don't even make sense, but they're that bad, and they're that antagonistic and misogynistic towards women. And yet she's the women's candidate? Yeah. Girl power, right? I mean, again, I guess there where's are limits the media to it. on this one? Yeah, huge double standard. If you get on to her maid? It's amazing. There's a very interesting detail in this terrific story by Paul Sperry. I commend him for writing it. Get all these excuses, like, you know, with Cutter, I, we, we actually haven't heard from her on this one, but right. Cutter, you know, giving the foundation a million dollars, she never repeated that or, or um, actually told the State Department about that, despite having promised to do so, if there were any big donations that came in. I mean, my goodness, it's like one after another. For years, and I remember calling one of them. It's good to have you here, Dorian Great Stevens. To see you. All right, I'm going to be back in two. WikiLeaks releasing its 19th batch of emails belonging to Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta. And we have just uncovered emails from a former State Department official that says everyone was using a private email. Wow, our own Peter Barnes is in Washington. I guess the title kind of says it all. I mean, it, it, they clearly recognized that this could be a problem for them. So why wasn't it shut down earlier in light of the fact that she knew she was going to run for president? I think because of what your colleague in Washington has in corporation, what, what we have here is in effect political uh, a, a corruption at an institutional level. It seems, again, they, they recognized on, on one level that this would be a problem, that this could come back to haunt them. Um, do you think her inability to actually see this herself? I mean, these are the people around her, right? The campaign managers and all the, the, the people that are doing the sort of day-to-day -day work. Her inability to recognize herself that this was a problem. How does that affect your fundamental view of her ability to lead our country? Look, you're all directly to the Kremlin. She signs off on that as her husband, through the foundation, is getting a hundred and four more than lazy journalists. It is about the establishment, except for places like Fox and Breitbart. These people are... One side or the other anyway. Um, Dr. Gorka, always good to have you here. Thank you. Great so to be here, Trish. Us. All right, illegal immigration, everyone's...